Who knew that this could actually happen? Yeah, you can actually leak spinal fluid or CSF through your nose. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 31-year-old female who began to leak a lot of clear fluid out of her nose. Initially, she thought it was just a cold or maybe even allergies, but the drainage persisted. It was very clear, and when she sat up and the fluid came out, she would get a severe headache that was relieved by laying down. She even noted that it had a little bit of a metallic taste to it. When thinking back about her history, she noted this drainage seemed to really start after she had an endoscopic sinus surgery done to remove polyps. For those of you that guess she has a CSF leak through her nose, you are correct. You can really leak brain fluid out of your nose. We look at the anatomy, you can realize how close your nasal cavity is to your brain. Here's a really good picture that shows the sinuses in relation to the proximity to the brain. Your nasal cavity is separated from your brain by a very thin part of skull called the cribriform plate, which is approximately four millimeters thick. Any defect in the cribriform plate, you can leak spinal fluid from the brain through your nose and it can come out of your nose. Spinal fluid is crystal clear, so symptoms of a CSF leak include clear fluid that leaks through your nose, headaches that get worse when you sit up and better when you lean back, and a metallic taste in your mouth. Light sensitivity, ringing in the ears, and nausea are also symptoms. Why would this happen? The most common causes are head injury where you can get a micro fracture through the cribriform plate leading to a leak, surgery like in our patient's case. Remember, I said that she had endoscopic sinus surgery and then the other explanation could be something called pseudotumor cerebri, where the pressure in the brain is really high and can cause a leak through the nose. Sometimes we don't even know why people can get it and it can be spontaneous. These types of leaks are extremely rare. So how would we determine if clear fluid that's coming out of your nose is actually just snot or CSF? We're taught in medical school and in Gray's Anatomy that you can perform what's called the halo test and see if you get a ring around the fluid. That's not really sensitive or specific. So we have a better test that's called a beta-2 transferrin, which many of you got that right answer. You can take the fluid and send it to the lab to check for what's called beta-2 transferrin, which is a protein found only within the CSF. So if the lab comes back that it is positive for beta-2 transferrin, ding, 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 it is quite confidently CSF. Well, now that we know that it's CSF, how do we fix it? It goes without saying that this is a dangerous thing to have because you don't want bacteria going retrograde and causing a meningitis or essentially having bacteria from your nose infecting your brain and could potentially be life-threatening. So this needs to be fixed. CAT scan with thin cuts is one easy way that we can really investigate the cribriform plate to see if there's any defects, which you can identify one in this patient right here. MRI scans can sometimes be useful, and then we also utilize a test called a cisternogram or a myelogram where we actually inject dye into the spinal fluid through the lower back and allow it to circulate to see if it comes out through a defect in the skull base. Sometimes a test called a pledget test can also confirm whether or not CSF is leaking through the nose. We place small little cotton pads into the nose inject a radio tracer into the spinal fluid to see if that fluid then comes out through the nose onto those pads. Finding the location of the leak can sometimes be very challenging. Once the leak is identified, in most cases, it can be repaired endoscopically or through the nose. Traditionally, this type of repair is done by an ENT doctor where you can place a camera through the nose and then place a special graft into the defect. Here is another view where you can see where the graft is kind of plugging that hole. In some cases, we also utilize a lumbar drain, which will drain spinal fluid from the back to allow time for this to heal. By draining fluid through the back, you will decrease the pressure in your head to lessen the stress on the repair that was just done. Makes sense. So to summarize our patient's case, she was found to have CSF leaking through her nose after the fluid was tested for beta-2 transferrin. We then performed additional diagnostic workup, which led us to find the hole in her nasal cavity, which was felt to be due to the endoscopic nasal surgery that she had six months prior. That hole was then subsequently repaired endoscopically by an ENT surgeon, and she was kept hospitalized with the lumbar drain for several days. And after no more leaking was found through her nose, 
The drain was removed and she's done great ever since. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.